What's up guys, Chris here. Uh, before I get started with this video, I have to uh, cover something real quick uh, that I did in my last video because I'm recording these after each other. And that is that I'm wearing these cotton Mickey Mouse Michael Jackson gloves. And I had some sort of strange allergic reaction on my palms uh, about 10 days ago now. And it was kind of like acid burns or whatever. So it got all red and started blistering and skin peeling off. So they're not exactly presentable, but I want to record these videos ASAP. So uh, that's why we're doing the gloves thing here. Uh, also, like I mentioned in the video before this, uh, these videos are being recorded with my new camera, uh, Panasonic HC-VXF990. I'm recording in 4K mode, 24P. However, I will be outputting the final video to YouTube in 1080p downsampled, but with a very high bitrate. What that does for me is that the video is still gonna look very clean, crisp, sharp, and nice. Uh, but I just don't feel like there's, right now, not an actual need to output in full 4K to YouTube. So, let's jump in. This is a package from Boom Arms. And the things in here are items that I've been looking at getting for a little, quite a while. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like, I have this sort of, uh, you know, to buy list Excel sheet uh, that, that I um, keep updated. And then whenever, um, you know, a web shop has discounts or I'm, I'm buying something else, I try to look for these items. If they're in stock and at a decent price, I uh, go ahead and buy them. So, uh, yeah, let's start with the least interesting. Which one of these would be? I think that's least interesting. So this is a RWA Red Wolf Airsoft Agency Arms Trigger for the Tokyo Marui Glock 17. Uh, and this is in a tactical charcoal gray or something like that, I think it's called. Um, this is intended for my Agency Arms Glock 19 build, which is still, you know, in a, in a bag here under my table. But I'm hoping, I'm gonna send the frame off to my buddy DJ Komodo. He's, uh, he's gonna provide his stippling services to me for that frame. Uh, I've seen uh, his stippling and, and the photos he posts and they're actually, he's pretty good, better than, uh, than I am. And he also has to write like stippling tips and all that. So here's what the actual trigger looks like. Someone uh, asked me on my Instagram post what color it is, and it's definitely, let's see, what do I have that's black? This would be black. So you can see it's a pretty pretty light charcoal gray. Um, it is anodized, I think. So you could have it refinished if you know someone who does Cerakoting, they could put a quick uh, coat of Cerakote on top. Since the markings are deep engraved, there's no like laser engraving that will be damaged by refinishing it. So uh, I'm not really, you know, <clears throat> this trigger doesn't really excite me very much. It's just that it's a trademark on the Agency Arms Glock belts. And so it was available. I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm pretty sure even though this is for a TM Glock 17, that it's going to work in my WE Glock 19 base gun uh, for the uh, Agency Arms build. You also get this little baggie here with some thread locker, the trigger safety, uh, some screws and pins for installation. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's the agency trigger. Uh, I do have to say, I like RWA's boxing on this. It's kind of Magpul-ish, but not as, what should I say, as bland. You know, they do the cardboard box with this black print, which actually, I like it because it's environmentally friendly. But the, you know, this is similar. Pretty cool. Next up, we have an Ace One Arms 
Tactical barrel upgrade kit suppressor barrel with steel thread protection 6.01 inner accurate barrel. And this is for da -da, the Umarex VP9 tactical threaded barrel. Um, so if you again um, follow me on Facebook or yeah, I think I posted on Facebook about this. I um, obviously or hopefully you've seen my video on on the Umarex VP9 that I'm actually, I'm really liking that pistol. It's growing on me a lot. So this is the Ace One Arms Sil Silencer Co. I actually thought this was pronounced Silencero, but there's a R-C-O. So it's Silencer and then Co. Uh, Silencer Co. Silencer Company or something like that. 9x19 VP9. Uh, their logo on top here, I would assume. Uh, not sure how I feel about this side being cut out open. Um, I mean, it doesn't really affect anything since it's going to be in, inside the, the gun, but whatever. Not sure how true to the real thing the thread protector is, but it does look nice. has really cool knurling on here. Comes off. There is a... Or is there? No, there is no O-ring on this one um, to keep it in place, but you know, that's an easy install. Uh, super light. You can hear the aluminum sound. Finish is top notch, obviously. Engravings really good. Ace One Arms always do pretty nice job with these things in my opinion. I'm hoping it's gonna be a drop-in fit. Pretty sure. And uh, Let's see, I'll, I did an unboxing video just before I start recording this one where we had the <clears throat> the detonator thread protector. So let's see what that looks like in comparison. One thing that I think the detonator does better is that it actually has the lip on the front. And that should be a drop-in fit. Yeah, there's a pretty significant gap between the tip of the thread protector and the tip, tip of the barrel. So that would uh, sort of go against using this on the VP9 barrel, perhaps. You can see they have a slightly different knurling patterns. We'll see. Uh, probably on the Glock 19 build, I'll, I'll use this one or something else. Actually, hold on a second, there's no inner barrel here. Ah, it actually says, no include inter barrel. No include inter barrel. So yeah, that's good to know. They do not include the inner barrel. I don't really care, because I'm not a fan of the Ace One Arms inner barrels. Now, the good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Super cool box. XC, Shorefire XC1 replica weapons light, rail mounted weapons light. This box is in itself almost worth what I paid for it. I think this was about $55 or something. How is it possible that my hands are leaving marks even with cotton clubs? God damn. Uh, there's actually a, another item in here. We'll put that to the side for now and focus on the light. Let's take a look, nothing in the top. Nothing in the bottom. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I really think this is cool. It's a very rugged, I don't think, it, it's not like an otter case or something, but I think it's cool that they include such a high quality looking box. Having a little bit of problem opening these Ziploc bags with the cotton gloves. <clears throat> Two sizes hex keys on here. Now there's a let's see. It might be that I confuse this bag here, and these are actually for 
Yeah, I think these are for the RMR side, so we'll put those to the side for now. <clears throat> Doesn't look like, let's take a look again. Are you serious? Because there are tiny hex screws in here. But that does not fit in there. Does not fit in here either. All right, so uh, no batteries included, it appears. Um, hmm, having a little problem here where I'm getting shade from the new camera is a little bit bigger, so I can't come in as close without the light getting blocked, but I'm hoping this won't do. So you can see it has pretty nice looking Surefire logo replicated. It has a little QR code in here and a serial number. And on this side it says XC1. On the back it has these rocker switches. I was a little bit confused. I thought they were like the uh, M3 light that you were supposed to toggle them uh, like this, turning them. But you actually it has a little clicky activator when you push them down. Um, not sure if this has a strobe mode or not. Uh, if anyone knows, what is this cap right here for? I have no idea. It looks badass. I would almost assume that there, it was like a laser in there, but there's nothing in there. So I'm not sure what that does. Is that the maybe battery compartment or something? Um, I'll have to Google it. And that's the LED right there. I haven't tried this with a battery yet, but from my past experience with these ACM, <coughs> excuse me, replica lights, it's normally pretty good. Uh, you know, 100, 140 ish lumens, I would almost expect. I do have a real six hour uh, tactical light that's advertised at 120, so I can sort of get a feel for how close this is. Let's see, what's this? There's some sort of locking tab in here. Hmm, not sure what this does. Doesn't appear to do much. Uh, like I said, I think I'll have to look up the official real manual and see what that's about. Next, a an RMR sight. Uh, I have two RMR sights from Ace One Arms. One of which, one of the adjustment uh, screws is no longer working, so it's sort of locked in. I can't work all of it sideways or up or down, but one of them is not working to adjust anymore. And I've also heard reports that they don't handle recoil very well and that the glass pops out from time to time. So a while ago, or actually it's probably many months by now, uh, there was a rumor that there was another company that released RMR sites that were better quality. And I'm hoping that is what I bought. I'm not sure. The plus side that I like on this, it has authentic hex or Allen key adjustment wheels. The Ace One Arms has flathead screws that I don't think is authentic to the real thing. Both the uh, windage and elevation are hex keys. Has full markings on it. US patent number something something made in USA, Trigicon logo. Uh, let's see, RM062PE something it says up there and then something else. Uh, comes with a standard rail mount, very low profile, obviously for fitting this on a Glock or something. You take off the base right here and screw it directly into the RMR cut on the slide. Front of the lens has this cool coating on it. And the back looks like that. Uh, I don't think there's any point in me putting in the battery and turning on the dot simply because it can't uh, focus correctly uh, when you're using a camera. It sort of like it gets very strange. But let's see. So yeah, this one is where the big hex key. Oh, that's ooh, that's nice clicky. I'm not sure if you can pick that up, the sound, but that is a very nice feeling adjustment wheel. Let's put it up against the microphone a little bit. Hopefully you'll hear that. 
very nice. So the small one is uh, for the, the actual screws in here and the slightly bigger one is for these. So yeah, that, uh, this looks nice. Hopefully it's of better quality than Ace One Arms. If it is, I might um, buy another one. This was also about 50, 55 ish dollars. Pretty cool. And it also comes with a very nice silicone rubber protector. Fits snugly on top, like so. And it also comes with a CR2032Q lithium battery. I always like when they include batteries. Uh, you know, it's not like it's super expensive or a big deal, but you need to go get in, you need to find the right one. Uh, then of course there's the, might be of questionable quality and dirt, uh, you know, power when it's uh, China made lithium battery. On the other hand, the Duracells and <clears throat> all of those brands made in the same factory, just they put a logo on it and maybe have a little bit better QC. Uh, so yeah, probably not a big deal. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, no fancy, fancy plastic box for this RMR. So it goes in a Ziploc bag. Uh, the, the manufacturer of this was advertised as ACM, I believe. Uh, from what I know, there's Ace One Arms, Guns Modify, Black Cat, I think there's one called, and then ACM. Uh, they might, you know, be all from the same factory, who knows. Right, final box. Check this out. MRO red dot sight. Again, same uh, type of bag as the, um, oh no, they actually wrote on this. That's not cool. Uh, same type of case as the XC1, but of course this is for MRO, it's black. <clears throat> this one actually has quite a bit of stuff in it, which is very cool. We have uh, huh. MRO instructions. Uh, let's see, MRO, this is, uh, the real one is made by Trigicon and MRO stands for Mini Rifle, uh, Miniature Rifle Optics, I'm pretty sure of this. So here's some sort of spec sheet, a little bit of instructions, magnification, one time, sniper with the one time. Uh, so the thing about, uh, I don't think you can trust this. This is probably a copy from the real one. So if it says that, it says something here like battery life is five years. If you have it continuous use on setting three, probably not gonna happen with a ACM copy, but uh, kind of cool that they included. And then here, <laughs> this site comes in so many var var varieties. Uh, take a quick look here. There's the high mount, there's a low mount, there's a um, uh, offset mount, they have the co-witness mount, whatever. Uh, and I do believe people had sort of problems getting a hold of the actual mount that they wanted for this one. This comes with this super ugly tri-wheel knob mount. Uh, which I'm not a fan of, but I, it does also have a built-in low, uh, what's it called? Low mount rail mount. Let's take a look at this <clears throat> strange thing. I have no idea what the heck, who, who would want, why would you want this on your rifle? I don't know. But it's, uh, you know, if you need to get it a little bit higher up off of the rail, that knob is actually absolutely <clears throat> looks terrible. Uh, not gonna use it unless I have to. But, ladies and gentlemen, oh no, there's a little bit of a mark on here. Arr, there's a little bit of discoloration right there. 
Anyway, Trigicon, M-R-O, one click equals half M-O-A. This is the full marking version. This is available in full marking, no marking, black, tan, and some other things. So the thing about this one is that it has a very wide field of view when you're looking through the back end, sort of, because the front is, I'm not exactly sure if it's one inch in diameter in the front, and this is like three quarters in the back or something. But uh, supposedly this became pretty popular among real uh, shooters because it's, you know, good field of view and it's sort of like an upgrade from your traditional uh, Aimpoint T1. We have an adjustment knob up top. We have six settings. And then I'm not sure what NN means. Ooh, that's also pretty nice and clicky. Well, let's see where, which, like which, where, which is the on position for these. That's really nice and clicky. But there's no indicator on the bottom half which mode is actually active. <laughs> I guess you'll have to take a look. I would assume whatever is facing you is the active mode of this, the, the dot. I have a battery compartment up top. CR2032, pretty common. Uh, has a, an O-ring on the cap. And this also comes with a battery, CR2032. Uh, screws to mount it on that ugly high mount and some allen wrenches and a cleaning cloth <coughs> Which is pretty nice um, Like I said, here's the built-in low what, Low profile mount. Sorry, that's the word I was looking for uh, So this goes on directly onto your uh, Picatinny rail and if you need to get it higher you can use the ugly knob thingy uh, does feel like this has some sort of rubberized coating on top. A little bit strange, they include Allen keys, but the adjustment screws are flathead. So the Allen keys only work here, not for uh, actual dot adjustment. But yeah, this is gonna look pretty sweet on probably my M4. Not, I might try it on a couple of different of my rifles, see where it fits best. Uh, not very heavy, T1-ish. I like the coating again on this one. Uh, yeah, that uh, I found this online. It says that if you look in this angle, it does say that by design, the front lens is actually uh, tilted for better projection of the dot or something like that, it said. It's cool that they actually implemented that on this this replica. Actually, I want to pop in the battery and see. Uh, give me a second here. Um, you know what, guys? It looks like someone's eyelash has made it into my optic. Um, probably, yeah. You can see it in right there. <laughs> That's someone's eyelash from the factory that is in, on the inside of the glass. Damn, that's annoying. I don't think I'm gonna try to disassemble it. And it's, no, wait, is it a scratch on the lens? Oh. Wow, really? It is, I can feel it with my fingernail. That's almost um, RMA worthy. That's a bit disappointing. I'll have to email Boom Arms about that. That's not cool. Anyway, where we're gonna take a look at the actual dot. Let's see. N, no friggin' idea what that means. Big N, no idea. 
dot setting numero uno nothing two let's see let me have a look from my perspective yeah there is a very very faint dot on the first setting uh, on the second one we can start to see the red dot in there third oh there's uh, an off switch between two and three probably because that's what you're going to use most so you don't have to turn the knob all the way uh, setting number three get a slightly brighter dot let's let have a look here it's always difficult to focus on these things the funny thing is when I'm holding it in the camera the dot looks good when I'm trying to look through it with my eye it doesn't really let's crank it up to number six yeah that's a that's a nice dot yeah pretty cool I actually like that feature that there's an off switch between two and three because most people probably run down three or four so you don't have to turn all the way but damn this uh, that scratch it's uh, it's deep I feel it almost hope I would almost wish it it were uh, someone's eyelash in there anyway uh, so if you wanted to use it on this high mount you would remove these two hex screws right here take off this end of the mount put it on top and uh, secure it with uh, actually how the heck do you would you do that hmm I'm probably being stupid here but how would you get the screws there's no screw oh there they are uh, my bad I'm uh I'm drunk. Yeah, there are screw holes. So anyway, it would uh, sit like that, sort of. Looks frickin' terrible. <sighs> yeah, that's a shame with the scratch. Like I said, I'll, I'll contact Boomar and see what we can work out about that. On a positive note, the, the battery is nicely secured in here actually I had to get a screwdriver out to pry it off and in the battery cap it has this spacer as well to really push the battery in place sometimes on these ACMs the battery fit a little, a little bit uh, sketchy and so they don't really turn on properly when you uh, turn the knobs but uh, doesn't look like that's an issue on this model I'm gonna have to do a meme reference right here uh, right here uh, Let's see, can I get it on? There it is. And I'm gonna say, how can he scratch? Uh, it's a joke for Simon, my pool buddy, and also the video. Uh, how can he, how can she slap? Damn, that's a shame. Actually, you know, maybe actually using it, it's not that big of a deal noticeable but I'll definitely send out an email and see what's uh, what we can do about that okay guys that's it for this unboxing video sorry if I maybe went on a little bit long on the MRO here uh, some people will actually comment on my unboxing videos and they're like oh bro how the heck can your uh, unboxing video be 30 minutes long uh, I kind of get that most people just like put it out of the box show it and it's done I uh, since I don't very often actively use and follow up on each of these products the only time I feel like I can showcase them properly is when I'm unboxing and also you know I enjoy getting a little bit of extra information instead of just here's this boom here's this boom uh, so that's why I kind of maybe rant on a little bit uh, you also get a better feel for what the what the what the product looks like and uh, what to expect if you buy so if you buy the MRO you can expect a big scratch in the front lens probably not um, but yeah anyway hopefully in the next couple of videos the gloves are gone and my hands are back to normal or maybe this is the new thing here on the channel who knows uh, yeah I'm uh, interested in popping in battery in the flashlight seeing how that works 
Uh, and I'm also really looking forward to getting my VP9 gray model. I'm gonna put this VP9, Ace One Arms VP9 barrel in it, put on my full marking slide from the black VP9 with Crusader parts and hopefully have a really badass looking tactical gray VP9. That's it for this video guys, I'll see you guys next time.